Okay, so we're recording, going live on Facebook. Okay, let's see if it did it. it says we're we are live. All right. Streaming live. Cool. Well, we are live on Facebook. Hey, everybody. Hello. Happy Friday. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Yeah, it's good. It, it's good to be back here tasting wine with everybody on a Friday. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like to say we do quarantine right around here. So, um, you know, we're all uh, doing what we can to to make the best of a challenging situation. And one of the things that we all collectively do well is uh, know how to have a glass of wine or two. So we're excited to be back here on this Friday with Lori and Tink from Falcor once again. Uh, we'll go around and uh, introduce ourselves and then jump into some of the wines that we're tasting. So I'll start. Uh, David Britz broadcasting live from Los Angeles, California. I'm Dave Roberts uh, coming at you from Chicago, Illinois. Segi Isho coming at you from Detroit. And Laurie and Tink coming at y'all live from Napa, California. Awesome. And, and we have affectionately, uh, within the last 10 minutes, uh, dubbed this Falcor Friday. Um, and, and I say we, I'm trying to take credit for something I didn't do. Um, it was, it was Segi who came up with that. So Segi, why don't you tell us a little bit about that stroke of genius? So, uh, as many of you know, I have an almost three-year-old and an almost one-year-old. So that means I read a lot of children's books to them. And what do children's books like? Alliteration. Terrible, terrible alliteration to make things rhyme in books uh, and to keep kids engaged. And um, so, as I was thinking, Falcor, well, that starts with an F. And then you have Friday, which <laughs> also starts with an F. So I got those two Fs in there. Um, I went through a lot of different drafts with uh, way, way different Fs uh, that we couldn't do here. So that's how I came up with it. Unfortunately. <laughs> it's not trademarked. Uh, I saw the application. Yeah. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank y'all for making us broke quick. We appreciate it. <laughs> It's the least we could do on this Friday. What are friends for? Exactly. And, Friday. And, because, and because it's Friday, we're going to go with the rosé. Okay. It's a yes. different wine than we've done so far. Yeah. Yes, I'm excited about this rosé. Yeah, we had a Me blast too. with you guys on Wednesday. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, we I had a great time. That's why we're doing it again. Yeah, and you I know. Don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to hold my wife off of uh, this rosé, so we're going to have to get yeah, into it. Quickly. We're going to have to start like ASAP. It will be gone at your house. There. It just feels, rosé feels appropriate for a Friday in the spring, you know? Yeah. It just feels like the right thing. I, I would agree. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting to that time of year, rosé, weather. You know, I like we like rosé at Thanksgiving as well. I think it's just great. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm very... I'm very particular on when I drink rosé and what I do is I like to reserve it for all year round. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say your your rosé time is after 7:30 a.m. I think. Yeah. That's right. Provided I'm not up at 5. <laughs> Any, anytime he's thirsty at yeah. all. I I would I would agree with y'all. Now Lori, have you guys 
has it been the last few years you've done screw top on this or did you ever cork the rosé? Yes. Yeah, so what I wanted to show y'all was our first iteration that yeah. we did. And I wanted you to see the difference in the color. Oh, wow. Look how dark that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There. Yeah. There's the label. Did a label and we had, and it was corked. You know, I mean, not corked. <laughs> it had a cork in it. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. now compared to our current mm -hmm. iteration. So we went to. Okay. We went to screw tops. I mean, honestly, y'all, it's just, it's a lot easier and quicker to get into. You know, yeah. think about it. If you're on a boat or you're on your front porch, I mean, you just pop it open. You don't have to go hunt around for a wine key. Um, yeah. You know, and two, we, it just, I don't know. I just, it just, it just went well with it. There are a couple of the wines that, um, that, that, you know, we had gone to the screw tops with, but we're keeping cork and everything else. This is the only one now currently that we have with the screw top on it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you why, why, why I like the screw top is because you never, generally, you never just have one bottle of rosé. <laughs> you you have that screw top, you can just crack it off and you're That's ready right. to go. That's right. That's I mean. I'm trying to make things easier for, for your drinking habits here. We're, we're working on that. There's, there's a reason we're all friends. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so right off the bat, as soon as you pour it in the glass and you take a sniff, it's just like, a giant grapefruit just being shoved in your face. So much of that, that grapefruit nose. It is. It is. Um, I'm, getting, I'm getting a little peach on the nose too. Yes. So the one thing that I love about this rosé, well, I love everything about this rosé, but when, when Tink and I were traveling a lot back when we all could travel and we weren't, you know, stuck at home and like we are now uh our favorite rosé uh, that we used to drink when we were at hotels was this beautiful french rosé called domain on we just love that rosé so our prior rosés to us we it, it wasn't quite you know we loved them but we wanted to move in that direction so when fernando and i started blending this rosé i bought a bottle of domain not in and we sat in here and blended until we literally could not taste the difference between our rosé and the other rosé which was uh, go selling retail for about eighty-five dollars. Yeah, dollar. exactly. No, yeah, wow. We still got ours in the twenties. Yeah, and this is what is the price point on this, Lori? Twenty-nine. This is a great price. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Know, you. It's it's um, mm -hmm. it's this is a this is this is a porch pounder. This it is, is yep. a this is a, I can have six classes and not realize I had six classes kind yeah. of rosé. Yeah. You can have, and I, I know how your classes are, so that's about a bottle and a half for you. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about this rosé is, first of all, you could see in the color, it's, it's really light. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily drink light. You know, when you, when you first taste it, there's so much of that grapefruit flavor. And then as soon as you swallow and follow through get a lot of that raspberry and some of that peach but it, there's no burn it's there, it's not super acidic which is great because a lot of a lot of people don't like some of the rosés because they have heartburn and and they're super acidic but this one is not at all no right we wanted it to be crisp but not tart you know and there's just a there's just a real fine line with that um so that's that's that was our goal you know and again we just like we talked about the other day, we want it to be a great standalone wine to where, you know, we're, we're all drinking it without food. But then if we did want to pair it with something, you know, some nice chilled uh, shellfish, things like that would just go great with it, you know. I don't know if you guys get this uh, green, green apple Jolly Rancher is there all day. Yeah. Yeah. There's some fun things. Green apple it. Jolly Rancher. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Which you know I personally like. So yeah, uh, well, yeah, this is this is fun, and this again, it's you know I I want to be sixty plus degrees at least. Um, although you know that's hard for Seggy in Detroit, um, but I want to be six heat in my house. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be sixty plus degrees. I want to have my feet up. You know th that's the way I want to drink this. Um, Ideally, I'm sitting outside enjoying the weather. Um, you know, this is this is that kind of rosé for me. It, it is. So, 
we so I, what I love about this is it comes from Mendocino County. It's Grenache and Carignan, uh, so it's just. Uh, I like the fact that we're getting it from Mendocino County. You know, we talked about price points the other day and, you know, first of all, you, you know, trying to find, you know, a, those grapes anyway here in Napa just isn't, isn't, you know, there's just not a lot of it here. And this way, this again, helps us to keep the price points down because Mendocino County, it's just not, you know, it's just not as expensive to buy fruit there. And the fruit quality is really good. So we've been getting this from for the, forever from the same uh, guys, same brothers. Uh, they do sustainable farming. They're just good old, good old farmers, you know, been farming that way for years and years and years. Lori, why don't you tell them how we end up with this light blush color when it's a red wine? Well, why don't you tell oh, them? Oh, you go ahead. No, no, I don't think you need <laughs> it. Well, I, I, I think you brought it up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, the whole clusters come in, in the bin, and uh, we let it uh, ferment or sit upon itself and the weight of the clusters of grape come down upon itself and we leave it, I, and I'm not sure exactly how long we let it. Not long. Not long, like 12 hours? Uh, not, 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 not long, I mean, it just will yeah, vary when it comes in. Typically, we yep. don't let it sit for more than 12 hours. It could be as little as four to five hours, and then we siphon that off. And that's why the blush color comes the way it does, because right. the tannins or the skin color doesn't get into mm -hmm. the yeah. into the wine. And again, these are all red grapes. Yeah. Right. And the, the skin is where a lot of that bitterness comes from, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. And even remember we knew, and remember we talked about the tannins, and that's you know seeds and stems and and the skins as well. So. But uh, but but we prefer this French style of making it. Uh, again, it just produces something super crisp yeah. and light. Yeah, that's yeah, a that, great that way shows, to do it. Shows the color. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, to me, it does, it drinks more like a French rosé. And that's exactly what the Domain yeah. is, a beautiful French rosé. Yeah. We absolutely loved it. And the, you know, the earlier one. And uh, here's the color of the first one we made. Of the earlier one, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. that was it's almost color, red. But you can see the difference in the color. Yeah. 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 That was a, that was a Pinot Noir though, so completely you know completely different. Again, we to, to us it was just we enjoyed it then, but then we started drinking the lighter French rosés. We realized that's really the style we wanted to do, and we've kept it this style now uh, for a long time. The only thing that we've changed this year is we or for 2019 is we just went back to silk screening on the bottle. Again, mm -hmm. it just makes it easy. It looks better when you pull it in and out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of your wine cooler. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I really love the look of your bottles you know there, mm -hmm. there's an instagram account that i follow i think it's like terrible wine labels or something like that <laughs> and this is something you'd never see on there because it's yeah. simple it's it's elegant it looks high class like if i'm just highlights walking down, the color highlights the wine yeah. you know yeah. if i see this on a shelf i'll be drawn to this because it looks you know it looks like it was handcrafted you know from start to finish so that's what i really like about all your bottles even on the on the reds same thing you know yeah thank you yeah i think tink said where you were we were like the uh, second or we were the so. second winery in napa to go to silk screening back in 1996 yeah uh and people thought we were crazy and uh because it does cost a little bit more yeah. it costs a little mm -hmm. bit more to do it um but again it looks it looks great and you, and you you know you bring up a good point too you think about it if you're you do have it in a tight wine cooler and let's say it's a $150 bottle and you've got a label on it and you're going to bring it out and you scratch the label, you know, bringing right. it out, but you're presenting it to some people at, at a, a fine okay. dinner. It just, it kind of ruins it a little bit at the beginning for you. You know, I'm sure it's, it's spectacular on the inside, but you still, you want it to be beautiful all the way around. Yeah. Or, or you're somebody like me who tries to jam uh, eight bottles of wine in their right. wine cooler <laughs> tray and yeah. uh, you know, you wind up scratching the label here too. I don't have to worry about that with your bottle. You don't have to, no. You don't have to worry. You can jam as many many of our wines in there as you want, David. Have at it. <laughs> we urge you to do that. <laughs> yeah. So how long? How long was this? Is this aged at all? Does it sit in oak barrels? Is it sit in yeah. steel? All stainless steel. We, yeah. we we tried in the past. We 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 would age it in a little bit of. Uh, uh, Sometimes experienced barrels. Well, yes, yes, yeah. So, so, yeah, some previously previously <laughs> enjoyed barrels, as we say in the when I was a 
in advertising them and the car doing car dealers previously enjoyed automobiles instead of used. So yes, we would, <laughs> we would use neutral, uh, neutral barrels, you know, uh, that, that have, that, have, you know, just, they have no more oak flavor to it. And we, you know, we're, we're, we, everyone uses, well, not everyone, but I know most of the people that we know, they'll use neutral barrels. So you've got to mix like with the cab that we're going to be doing next, you know, if you did all oak, as y'all well know, it would just be nothing but oak tasting. But yeah, we've got, this is really good how we're doing it. Like with the nooks when we're doing is 50%, uh, you know, new French oak right. with the cab, but right. then, you know. You can sit here. Yeah. I like that line. Right. I, think, I think that Everyone applies say to straight no chaser. I What's up, Ellen? Hey, buddy. I think that line applies to Straight No Chaser. When people say, oh, you guys cover songs, you're singing a cover song. No, no, no. We're singing a previously enjoyed song. That's right, what we're doing. Exactly. A song that you previously That's enjoyed right. by someone else or That's from right. someone else. Well, I think, that while, I think that while we have a second, I think we should all raise our glass and toast uh, to all the uh, nurses, doctors, healthcare workers, and first responders out there. Cheers to y'all. Yeah. God bless you all. Heroes. Job. And uh, one, one of the folks on the uh, program is one of my partners, uh, Aaron Hera, and he informed me today that some of the nurses uh, in Charleston, West Virginia, are volunteering to go up to New York in oh, harm's wow. way yeah. to take care of folks. I think that's, that's, that's great. Incredible. It is. It's unbelievable. So anyway, we appreciate what y'all are doing. Thank y'all so much. Y'all stay safe out there. Actually, if uh, if anybody's watching this and has uh, uh, heard of or know of any um, organizations that are providing meals to first responders or any sort of uh, way that that you can um, you know donate money or time or whatever it is, um, you know, please post in the comments. Let us know. Uh, we've been looking for something like that for you know as we're um, streaming some of our SNC concerts. Um, we're looking for charities to donate to. So that, that would certainly be something we'd, um, we'd want to participate in. So let us know. Yes. So it seems like a good time to segue yeah. to this bad boy. Absolutely. Yes, let's do it, y'all. Well, I'm not Actually, I was just going to say really, I was just going to say really quick what, I, what uh, Brits was mentioning it earlier, like this, this really begs for a porch and a sunny day. Um, for me, as I'm drinking this, I really want to have some like uh, grilled, uh, like red, yellow, orange peppers, um, mm -hmm. maybe even some grilled shrimp, uh, something like that. It's just really, as I'm drinking this, is really uh, screaming. My my palate really wants to have that grill going right now. Yeah, it's 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 just such a versatile wine, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's that's what we love about it. It's versatile. And remember, we said no rules. You know, there there are no rules in drinking. Drink it. That's right. Whatever y'all want to drink it with, we don't care. As long as you're drinking Falco, we don't care what you're what you're pairing it with. Exactly. And you know what's yeah. funny? Now that you mentioned peppers, Dr. I think um, for me, thinking about this w with like sausage and peppers, thinking about having. Oh, it, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. that would be a. This would be a lot of fun. Sausage and peppers, whether you're eating it, you know, uh, separately without a roll, or you're eating it as a sandwich. Like this would be awesome with some sausage and peppers. I mean, y'all are coming up with some great food pairing ideas. I mean, you know, when, <laughs> we'll start leaving some comments in there. What you, what you know, what y'all think it'd go with? You know, once you, once you uh, have a sip of it, let us know. Well, I want to, I want to, I want to sound fancy. We're quarantined. The only thing we're thinking about are food and, uh, and drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll throw out uh, something we enjoyed at. Uh, I don't remember the name of the restaurant in Nashville. We went to Brits Saint something. Uh, oh, yeah. Saint Stephen, Saint I think Stephen. is that what it's called. Where they had they had grilled watermelon that was unreal. Uh, I'd never absolutely. even heard of it before, uh, but that would go really well with that rosé as well. So yeah. I just wanted to sound fancy for a second. That is, that is super. <laughs> we've, had, we've actually had that before, and it's, it's spectacular. I don't know how they do it, but it's good. All right, here we go. We're gonna Thank we're gonna pour. All right, Premier Collection Cab. Tell us about this. How did this come? Yeah, about? well, we're this is. Premier Collection is new, right? It is super new, and this is the first one that we did. So, um, you, you know, our club members, what my goal, goal is, is for all of our club members, is that we've produced so many different wines that I never want anyone to get the same wine in a year's time, unless it's a new vintage. Right. So that way you're not drinking the same thing, you know, like you're, you know, every time you get it, you're getting a 
you or you're getting, you know, a San Giovese, something different every single time. Uh, so that's, that's my goal. So when we talked about on Wednesday, you know, cab prices have started to come down the last few years. So we were able to purchase some different ABAs that normally would be, you know, a little bit pricey for us in order for us to keep it our price points where we want them. So this was the first premiere collection that I decided to do. It's premiere because it is some, they are some great AVAs. So it's not like we were just, you know, going out and getting, you know, something, you know, not Napa-ish, you know, everything is, everything that we were doing, except for, I believe, one, um, but it's still on, it's, it's still a very, uh, very well-known AVA, but, so that's what I ended up doing. I just thought, hey, this will be fun, you know, this is a great way for y'all to be able to compare AVAs as well, you know, down the road, if you get a few bottles of it, you can say, hey, this one is, you know, Atlas Peak, and see the nuances in it, how that tastes, and then how the, you know, Diamond Mountain one's going to taste, and so th that's what we're doing, and and it's not going to, we're not going to be producing it every year. So it'll be totally random. It's just whenever I come across what I think is a great vineyard, what I think might be a great price point uh, for purchasing the wine that we could then relate that back to the, to our clients and give them a really good under hundred dollar a bottle Cabernet. And, and Laurie, excuse me if you, uh, apologies if you said it already, but where are the grapes from? Atlas Peak. Atlas Peak. Okay, Atlas Peak on this one. So this is the first one that we did. We found a, a really good vineyard. Um, you know, sometimes Atlas Peak, I'm not, I, I don't know how familiar you are with, with Atlas Peak wines. You want to do a quick AVA, um, like just quick download on AVAs, just because not everybody watching may not know what the AVAs are. Yes. Yeah, right. So this is, yes. So this is where it's, it's its own little wine, you know, region, sub-region. So you've got Atlas Peak is one. You've got um, Howell Mountain is another good one for cabs. Pritchard Hill is a good one for cabs. Uh, you know, you've got, and then you've also got, you know, Rutherford. Ruth, you, you hear people talk about the Rutherford bench. So, mm -hmm. you know, that produces a completely different flavor profile. Rutherford calves, which I love. You know, we do a great Rutherford calf. We did a Ruth, Rutherford yeah, calf. Good deal. Absolutely. Yeah, which is great. But y'all know that's like dusty, dirty, barnyardy, kind of stinky, all the good things that come with a great Rutherford calf. So this is, that's what those different ABAs, those little sub-regions, so they're all, you know, it's Napa, but then it's Howell Mountain, and this is Atlas Peak. So mm -hmm. Atlas Peak produces some incredible calves, but you, you do have to kind of be careful, you know, and, and really know your vineyard, because sometimes they, some of them can tend to be a little, kind of bell peppery tasting almost. Um, it's, it's, just a, it's just a quality of the soil, okay, up there. It's just like Rutherford gives you that, you know, barnyardy, dusty, dirty. Uh, it's nothing negative about it. It's just that, that we were lucky that we you were familiar with, you know, this vineyard and the farming technique. And so we knew that this wouldn't produce that, you know, that heavy bell pepper taste. Because it just wasn't what our, our profile, it's not what we really wanted to, you know, produce. Nothing wrong with it. Again, you know, there, there are great aspects in, you know, in wines. But this one, you know, we just... It, it, it was, we were very pleased with the way it turned out, especially for, for our initial, our initial one. Well, I haven't, I haven't sipped it yet. I've been, been, been smelling it. I'm, I'm struck with how fragrant it is. Uh -huh. It is a very, I mean, just really great um, aromas coming off. I, you know, get the cherry that you would expect, some, some yes. blackberry, and, and maybe even a little bit of that, like, licorice. Yeah. Just, yes. just a little bit. Because I, you know, yeah. I love I love the spice in it and the pepper. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I love is that spice and that pepper in Me it. Too. And yeah. what I really like once you taste it is I love the big mouth feel that it produces. I love that it hits all areas of your palate. You know, it's just like we oh, talked. Wow. About, yeah, like mm. like we talked about the other day. Yeah. It's very multidimensional. Top, yeah, it explodes it's right top there. to bottom, front to back, the all of it. Yeah, that's it great. does. It's just like you know. The first thing that jumped out to me on the nose was was caramel, which was so random to me. Yeah. But it, mm. but then it was so floral, mm. which I wasn't expecting. So I'm gonna dive in here and have a sip. And I got a lot of that um, 
cigar box that yeah, you yeah. were mentioning on the back yeah. of the bottle. Mm -hmm. I get that cocoa on the finish, but on the front end, you know, I was getting this random like uh, memory of, of being a child and having fruit by the foot. You know, the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, but I was getting, that's what I got on that front palette was, you know, that, that kind of fruit roll up, you know. Kind of like the candy cherry kind of a thing. Yeah. Just. Yeah. I get the candy cherry in there as well. Yeah. I definitely do. I, I, Again, I low, yeah. lowest, low acidity, you know, it's not, you don't get a lot of burn when you, when you take it down, which is nice. You know, I would love to, I would love to get stuck with, stuck with one of your <laughs> wines in a blind yeah. tasting. Because I feel like I could pick your wines out just because there is a style to all of the yeah. wines that you guys make. There's a way that the wines taste and a way they finish. And I feel like it would be, it'd be one of the ones I'd hope I'd get in a blind because I, I feel like I would, I would do all right if, if it was your wine because yeah, there's a style yeah. to it. Right. And, and, and our, our, our wines are so distinct. Like you can, if, if you pick it up, you know that's a Falcor wine. And, and speaking of blind tasting, so we had um, our, our reserve cab, you know, our 2012 reserve cab. And um, we just thought it was spectacular. We had a lot of our winemaker friends. And I went out and purchased a bottle of 100 point wine. I'm not gonna say the name of it. Everyone, y'all know whose it is. It's one of the big, big guys. And every, Everyone in here, everyone was like, oh my God, I've never been able to buy a bottle of that. Well, no, because it's a $285 bottle. No one's going to just right. buy it all the time. So I did a blind tasting with our reserve cab and with that wine. And every one of our winemakers picked Falcor over it. Wow, that's great. Every one, they all picked it. And they, they, of course, they all thought that they had picked the other one. They're like, oh man, sorry y'all lost to that, you know? But you know, if you're losing one, that's a good one. Like, dude, y'all picked our wine, you know? <laughs> Which was $120 compared to 285 bucks. <laughs> so yeah. just, goes, just goes to show you, you know? Um, price point, higher, higher cost on your wine doesn't, even, doesn't make it always a better wine. No. Because there's, there's a reason that, uh, you know, they've got to charge more, you know, uh, it's everything from the grapes to their general overhead, um, you know, and that there's a reason that some of the, the folks charge what they charge. And, you know, you guys really focus on buying really good fruit and you keep yeah. everything else lean and mean. And yeah. that's why you can keep the price points where they are. Right. We do. And we do try. Yeah, we do try to do that. I mean, it's, it's always in the back of my head, very, very uh, aware of the fact that everyone has some sort of a budget to stick to. Some people's are larger, some are smaller. I'm just super aware of that. And that's why we did the Graciano on Wednesday, because again, a great Tuesday night mm -hmm. wine. And that's why we have wines like the Sangiovese that are, are, you know, in the high 40s mm -hmm. and things like the Blanche. 40s and 30, you know, all these wines are in the middle price point range too. So this, this you don't feel like break the bank. Beautiful bad boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I really yeah. you know what I really want to eat with this? It's so random, but chicken and waffle <laughs> chicken and waffles. Ooh. Oh yo. <laughs> I feel like I feel like a little bit of that saltiness from the chicken and then yeah. some of that maple syrup with this would go really, really well together. Now, now you're talking Southern to me. I'm loving it. I agree. It's awesome. When are we going to oh, do that? Uh, we have Corey. a mud pie deep dish coming. That'll yeah. be here shortly. And It'll go great with it. Real well with it. Yeah. Corey, chicken, waffle, chicken and waffles, grits. When are we doing all this? I don't know. Y'all got to give me, y'all got to give me a heads up and not just like roll in randomly without any, <laughs> you know? I mean, all that stuff, you know what I can cook for y'all that y'all will love. And, and we can pair some of the wines with it. I'll, I'll, make, uh, I'll make my famous chicken and sausage jambalaya. Okay. So it has, oh, it, has fried chicken. it has fried chicken in it. So you actually fry the chicken separately, chop it up. So you get all those little fried chicken nuggets and little sniggles and all it. Oh, it's phenomenal, y'all. It is unbelievable. I'll make that for y'all. I've seen all how right. y'all can eat. I, I have. I've seen how y'all can eat. So, I mean, y'all got to give me time to make several batches of it. <laughs> we, we've had a uh, we've we've had a few pizzas at your place. Yes, yeah, and hey, <laughs> yeah. you know we can always we can always do pizzas on the grill. But Tink has already told us you're getting wag wagyu, so <laughs> pizza over wagyu. Maybe what we do is maybe we just give y'all a lot of pizzas first, and then we do the wagyu. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know 
we're stuck. That, that'd be amazing, well, actually. Next and, time I'll come and over. We, we're eight and a half. We talk about this. At least. At least. We talk a lot about, right, like, um, you know, price points and, and pairings. And, you know, like I just said, I'm, I'm going to have a, a, a deep dish pizza with this. And I'm really excited about that. Say was talking about chicken and waffles, yep. you know, maybe a little bit outside, sort of outside pairing uh, for, yeah. for a cat. But, again, it just goes back to what you're hungry for, what you're thirsty for, what, what you're in the mood for. And, and what your brain is telling you, I mean, it, it's telling you that for a reason, because there's something in there that is going to make it taste great with that wine, you know, because you, you've already pre you know, you've got that in your head already. It's like, oh, it's going to taste great with it. And it yeah. will, you know, it will. Yeah, we, we, we love our calves. So we're just making sure that we're, we want to make sure that we are producing enough different varietals. Uh, uh -huh. puppy. I was going to bring my dogs, but they're going to be this is, this is Rally. He came over. Oh, hi. You know, we're You're super not getting any wine. You're not dogs. getting any wine. Give them a kiss for me. <laughs> we, we love dogs. You know, we're very dog friendly at the winery. Um, so anyone that comes in, as long as your dog's on a leash and well behaved, bring them on. I remember having to climb over those dogs when we first came came over to see you guys. Yeah, they're they, not they, they would not move. No, no, they, they're very trusting. They're just going to lay there and just let you walk all over them. They're only going to move if you like them <laughs> piece of food. We've got, uh, we've got people talking about uh, they've got a case of Falcor that's getting them through the uh, getting yeah. through the isolation right now. So uh, thank y'all. Right? How has a case lasted so long? <laughs> because they yeah, just ordered it. They just ordered it and just got okay. it yesterday. <laughs> uh, and people talking about how they sneak Falcor into a waffle house so they can have, uh, you know, chicken and waffles. But we got we got people already thinking about how they can commit crimes while drinking your Yay. wine. <laughs> For the record, that was my my comment. <laughs> I, this is this is so random, but. This is a, a scent I really like. So I hope there's no offense taken, but I get like, when you know when you open a fresh can of paint? You know that initial smell? Do you guys, do you guys know that smell? Yes. I kind of get a little bit of that, but I really oh, like yeah. that smell, so. Somebody's been uh, watching too much Psalm. I have been watching Psalm, but I didn't get that one from, I didn't say fresh cut garden hose. Garden hose. Like, or yeah. tennis ball. Psalm TV is amazing. <laughs> it is. Dr, you're you're the last of the three of us to uh, subscribe. I've not I've not yet. I need to, I'm gonna um, borrow one of your logins and, and <laughs> check it out first. It's fun, dude. I'm I, sure uh, it is. I that was half the reason I I enjoyed uh, reading Game of Thrones because the descriptions <laughs> of the wine and the cheese and the meals were so fantastic. It just made you want to drink a nice cab and have a block of cheese. Exactly. Well, you know, it's funny. I was watching, uh, I was watching one the other day and the woman who was, she was doing a Chardonnay, um, you know, breakdown and, and the descriptions that she was using and how articulate she was. I was like, man, I got a lot of work to do. I'm just nowhere <laughs> near that level of, of uh, you know, being able to describe wines at that level. I mean, it was just, it was incredible. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, as much as we like to do this and we enjoy it and, you know, you see people who are operating on this kind of level and they just, you know, they're, they're so articulate and able to really describe all the amazing things about wine. And, you know, e even, even in doing that, um, you know, the great thing about wine is not everybody knows everything and everybody's interpretation is different and unique and, and, and whatnot, but it's fun watching those kind of shows and seeing, you know, how super descriptive people can be. Yeah. Sort of like Seggy when it comes to paint mm -hmm. and, you know, and the <laughs> tennis balls and the garden hose and, you know, you, you know, somebody will come up with something and you're like, Oh my God, I would have never thought of that, but you're right. That's, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> There's a lot. Thank you. Did you did you get did you get the paint cleaned up, Siggy? Because I imagine the only reason you opened the paint can was because of some horrible tragic accident in the garage. <laughs> oh no no no! There 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 are no uh, handymen able to come into homes at these times, so no paint is being opened. 
and no work is being done. I'm getting at whatsoever. What? <laughs> if pain was being opened, it was not by Seggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have somebody talking about a bijou. Um, I, I I have a. I think I have bijou on my fridge right now. Oh, we, now yeah, we can always some, we, we can always open a bijou, David. You probably got, you know what? Yeah. Look, look at that. Yeah, that's one of Guarantee my favorites. Guarantee, I've got one of those. We're 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 not we're not opposed to opening and drinking a lot more wine. You know us. <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah, I, the bijou is one of my favorites. I probably have a bijou or a Graciano in my house at all times. Actually, I know I do. It's a staple. It's, it's yeah. like eggs and butter. You got to have it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Bijou. Yeah, Bijou. That's, our, that's our last bottle. So we're going to have to order up a few more. Yeah, you need to. Bijou, yeah. I would have, if I'd known, I'd thrown, thrown a random one in there. Bijou <laughs> is our signature red. It's the first red that we ever produced. And uh, it's the one that we do produce the most of. So on this cat that we're drinking now, uh, we only did 170 cases of it. On the rose, we only did 120. So the, all of these are super limited production wines. Now, just question on on rosé, especially at that price point. Do you find that you're selling, you know, bottles at a time, or are people coming in and buying cases of that? You know, I mean, both. Uh, both are doing it. You know, all my people down south, because because of shipping. I mean, they're just buying about the case. Yeah. A lot of people that are that are here that are close. You know, they're coming in, but they're all because they're supplementing with reds. Yeah. I mean, I would say, well, I've only got one client, one that is in the quote white, white club, you know, the white club that we don't have. We, we don't even have it. He just, I just created it for him because all he drinks is are white wines. Every, you mm -hmm. know, everyone else, you know, drinks all reds. We used to have a white wine club and then uh, everyone started moving to our reds because they're not tannic and, you know, they're easy drinking. And so, yeah, he's a, he's, he's the lone guy, but hey, I'm happy to sit in white wine all day long. But yeah, most people here are just kind of doing a mix of the reds. But as you know what, we'll, we'll be sold out of this by the middle of the summer. I would imagine. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I forgot to ask you guys. And I don't yeah. even the rosés typically aren't built to last, right? You want to drink them in the season. You do. I mean, you do. Like Sorry, ours, ours will last till, you know, it'll be fine next year. You'll see it start to lose some of its fruit flavor. But, you know, it's still drinkable. But it's not as good as it is now. But, no, drink it now, y'all. Just, just drink it yeah, now. You want rosé, you drink, drink it immediately. Absolutely. Uh, drink it now. Drink it now. Enjoy it. Where are you guys with regard to, um, you know, restaurants and wine lists and stuff? What's your distribution like at this point? Okay, so we, we, don't, we don't distribute at all. We're 100% direct consumer. Now in California, we're in restaurants and we were at uh, some, uh, some, some of the finer hotels, a couple of Ritz Carlton's here and there. I mean, I hate to say this, but we have a real firm rule. Tink and I have a real firm rule. If we don't wanna eat there or we don't wanna stay there, we're not gonna put our wine there. Cause we wanna be able to support the people that support us. So, you know, we're, we're in some of the higher end restaurants here in Napa. We right. used to be down in Southern Cal quite a bit, but that takes someone going down and, you know, pitching the account, you know, pitching the restaurant and doing that. Uh, we do have one, we do have uh, one West Bacon Seafood that continue to buy our wines down there, a super high end restaurant down in Southern Cal. But as y'all know, it's just Fernando and me here every day it's just there's just two of us and the dogs and so let's talk about small and family owned and you know tink is back and forth on the east coast with his business so full time it's just fernando and you know fernando and me so it's um it's kind of hard to be so many places i mean i have to be here doing the day-to-day -day and seeing everyone so that's it the only way to get our wine so if you're a consumer is directly on our website on falcorwines.com or you can just email me at sales at falcorwines.com but you know that's uh, you know a, a good point to make because I think there's some wines where you can get them anywhere. Mm -hmm. You don't really need to be on a wine list, you know, because you can get the wines anywhere. With a wine like yours, right. you really kind of do need to be in the wine club and you need to be in the mix to right. to get the wines. Yeah, you can't. You're not going to find them anywhere else. You're not going to. I mean, you're not going to do it. You know, the the problem is that if we we were to go to that to that, we used to distribute heavily. When I came out here, we were about eighty five percent distribution and fifteen percent 
DTC. Um, had we stayed with that method, we would have had to substantially increase the price points of our wines because of what, how, you know, we would have to sell it that way to, you know, because we have to discount it so heavily to sell it through a distribution chain. So this way, this was just better for us. It was definitely better for our clientele, yeah. for us to keep the price points down. So that's one of the reasons that we, that we did that. Yeah. What is yeah. your total is production it? for the entire winery? Well, this, this last year and this year kind of are kind of low because of, you know, everything that happened, you know, with the fires now with this. So everyone's cutting back. I think probably this year, we're probably gonna only produce maybe maybe 1200 cases. On a, on a regular year, we're doing around 3500 cases. Again, not a lot. It puts us, we are your quintessential boutique winery. Family owned, boutique, you know, we, if the Bijou is probably, and maybe the H block on some given years, uh, are the only wines that we produce that we make over at maybe 300 or over cases of. Mm -hmm. Nothing's ever over 400 or 500 cases. Right. Yeah. That's why we sell out of some things, you know, pretty quickly that are, you know, really high on demand. Well, no problem to have. They say, yeah, I'm okay. Well, I mean, y'all know me. I squirrel away a lot of stuff, so <laughs> it, may be, it may be sold out, but I got, I've got 15 cases of it and yeah, it's hoarded I, for me. <laughs> yeah, I think she actually made 4,000 cases last year and squirreled away 2,000 of them right. for herself. Hey, it's come in handy right now, right? So <laughs> For sure. And for people that are asking, you know, when you hear the term D to C, um, what that means is direct to consumer, which yes. means that the winery is you know, a winery like Falcor sells directly to their consumer. Right. Um, they're not using any sort of third party broker or wine distributor or anything else. They're selling directly to the consumer. Um, the interesting thing about, you know, alcohol in general is it's regulated in the most archaic way. Um, you know, and, and certain things, you know, certain wines and spirits can be shipped to certain states, some can't, everything's different. Um, so there's a lot of rules and regulations involved, but, you know, a lot of your boutique wineries like Falcor will, will ship everything direct to consumer um, because it's, it's better for them. It's better margins. Um, and they actually get to have direct contact with their clientele. So they can provide that level of customer service, which is, you know, which these wineries want to provide. I agree. And not only that, we have control over the wine, um, how it's stored. So, you know, once it leaves here, if we were, you know, distributing it, we have no idea how it's stored. Are they selling, um, let's say they, they had some old uh, 2016 rosé that they were still trying to, you know, sell today. So, see, we just don't have any control over it. You know, I, we, we have control of how it gets to you, uh, you know, if UPS or FedEx or someone, you know, does something with it, you know, we have a way to, you know, for insurance to pay for it and cover it and everything else. So at least we have, I like having control over things. And so that's, to me, that makes it perfect. And you're right. It makes for so much better customer service. Yeah. And I get to, I get to know everybody that way. So yeah. that's my, that's my favorite part. I mean, a boutique winery is not all that different from straight note chaser, you know, we are very much counting on word of mouth for basically all of the people that come to our shows. You know, we don't have like crazy TV marketing campaigns. We don't have all these huge things that, you know, like U2 and the Rolling Stones and Bruno Mars and all these people have. So we're really counting on that word of mouth, but that's how you know the product is good, right? If you if That's you right. are still growing and you're seeing your wine sell out, then you know the product is good because it's not just being forced upon people because their options are these three wines when they go out to dinner, you know? So that's, that's a testament to the quality of the product. And that's a great point you bring up too, is that just like y'all, we rely on, you know, our friends and our clients to spread, spread the word. And I think probably one of the best parts about this whole insanity that we're all going through right now um, is that I think I've seen everyone reaching out and trying to help everyone else, 
you know, we're promoting, we're all definitely promoting y'all. And we always have since I knew about you and vice versa. And I think that's great. We're promoting, you know, all of our other friends who are in the music business and that, you know, you can't, you're not out being able to, you know, do your shows and bring in revenue that way. So let's make the, let's make the best of a, of a really weird situation and, you know, and support each other however we can. And that to me has just warmed my heart because um, it, it, it showed me how many really, really good friends we have and, um, and how much they care about us. And I'm hoping vice versa. I hope everyone knows how much we love them and we want everyone to succeed. And, and since we're all in it together, what can we do to just make the best of it? And I think, I think that everyone that I know and that, that we're dealing with and that our friends, I think we all are. And, and that, makes me, that makes me happy and it gives me hope every day when I wake up. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's a wonderful way to look at it. And I think when this whole thing started, everybody said, you know, make sure you check on your friends. And, you know, I think that that's, this is a, a sort of a different way for us to check in on our friends. But, you know, it, yeah. we're still checking in on our friends all the same. And, you know, it allows us to connect and, you know, our connection, through our connection, we can talk to people about our shared love of wine. And, you know, we have people that, you know, I can see that are commenting now that aren't even wine people. They're just, you know, they just want to be here for the conversation. And that's cool too. And through the conversation, maybe they discover wine, maybe they don't. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think the whole idea of, you know, us being a little isolated right now and needing human connection and everybody doing their part to try and provide that is, is important and good. I, I agree. You know, care about other people. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a great note to kind of wrap up on. And um, before we go, Lori, just one more time, let people know where they can find your wines, where they can find you, your socials, all that good stuff. Right. So um, falcorwines.com. Uh, you can find us uh, under Falcor Winery on Facebook, Instagram. We're, we're on all of those. And we're located here in Napa, California. We are, for those of those of you who are local, we are providing a curbside pickup service, completely safe. You don't get out of your car. You don't touch anything. We don't touch you. Uh, we're providing that. We're providing a free uh, delivery service for purchase of three or more bottles. All of that information is on our website as well. Um, and sales at falcorwines.com will get you directly in touch with me, one of the owners, and I can send you information. We don't have all of our wines up on our website. Uh, we're currently redoing our website and also some of the wines that are super, super low inventory, we, uh, we will pull those back and we, we reserve those for our club members. So I wanna make sure that those wines aren't up there so our club members who've been very supportive get first dibs. And speaking of my club members and all of our clients, I cannot thank y'all enough for supporting us during this time. It just, it means the world to me uh, that, that y'all are, you know, helping us get through this time. And so I'm wishing the best for all y'all. I do want to say, um, uh, say a big hi to my, my, to my sweet daddy. And I'm so glad you're feeling better today, today, daddy. I love you very much. And I can't wait till I get to see you again. So. And for straight, yeah. no chaser, yeah. you guys are hoping to get back on the road. Hopefully when? July. We've got a summer tour. We've got a summer tour planned starting in July and man, praying to God that, you know, we can start clearing up this stuff some somewhat soon and get back to some semblance of, of normalcy and, you know, get back to entertaining people, giving people a couple hours a night to turn their brain off from all of this craziness and just sit back, relax, smile and enjoy that previously enjoyed music yeah <laughs> and until oh, yeah. then you can find us here we'll be drinking yes. wine with each other yeah. and with you so here's to good health we hope to see you all Love very soon and y'all shows are amazing everyone tune in if you go at least go to their website and check them out until you can see them live unbelievable but hey i love you guys so much thank y'all thanks for always drinking my wine with us um Let's just keep doing this again until we run through all the riddles and then let's start over. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that, Lori. Love you too. For us. For you, 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 don't, you don't need to hard Thanks sell God. us. Thank <laughs> you for being here. Happy Friday, right, everybody. Happy Friday. Falco Stay Friday, safe. everybody. Falco Friday. Bye, y'all. Thanks again. Bye. Cheers, guys. Cheers.
your 